Freaks, it's Monday, October 24th, 2022. Coming up on the program today, a repressed memory of my dad beating the fuck out of me. Plus, rocking out to a quality Linda Finkel Hall of Fame cover, trying to drink a piss and shit smoothie, and hello, is this murder business? I want to hire you to kill my son. Distorted View Daily proudly presents Great Moments in Local News. Freaking eyes, seen the smoke flying through, through the wall. The house is on fire. Freaking, I, I, I knew it. You, but Do you think you're lucky to be alive today? No. No. Because I'm freaking smart. Freaking eyes, smell the smoke. My mother smelled it, my father smelled it, and it was a matter of time that that house friggin' went up. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to get ra- racial here. I'm going to get racial. Okay. Friggin' no. Nobody filled that oil tank all, all winter long. It was all kerosene. I heard a kerosene explosion. Boom. Friggin' I heard it. Friggin' ask. Boom, man. I, friggin' I heard the friggin' explosion. I seen the some smoke flying through my friggin' damn wall. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Hansen. If I were to molest somebody, I definitely would have done anal no matter what. She is a fat cunt. Welcome to 1-800-ASSHOLE. Timothy James Henson? Oh, my hands are like poo. Yes, everybody, Tim Henson, finally ready to start a new week of podcasts here on DV. Got a great one for you today. Hope you enjoyed the best of show I posted a little bit earlier. I needed some time. I just got home from Ashtabula. I needed to rest and unpack what I had heard. Oh, yeah, some major bombshells have been dropped, and I may never be the same again. No, it's nothing like that. I had a great weekend, uh, visited my mom, made her throw up. Actually, she did it herself. And my mom and my brother were planning, uh, you know, a dinner when I uh, when I came home. So on Saturday, we'd all go out to, you know, someplace to eat. It's like a Mexican restaurant or whatever, which I was fine with. I grabbed lunch beforehand at like 1.30, thinking we were going to eat at, I don't know, 7? You know, standard dinner time. I even made sure, I was like, I'm just going to get a small sandwich to hold me over at this place called Mr. Hero. It's like a cheesesteak place, that uh, regional chain. We don't have them here in C- Cincinnati, so uh, whenever I go up in Ashtabula, I eat it. So one uh, thirty in the afternoon, I'm eating the sandwich. That's when my brother calls and talks to my mom, and uh, they're trying to figure out dinner. And my mom's like, well, what time's good for you? And my brother said, not too early. And then my mom asked me to confirm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just, just not too early. And they decided on 5 p.m. because they're all ancient. And that's when old people eat. We get to the Mexican restaurant and uh, my mom was like, oh, this, 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 why is there no one here? It's because they were just finishing up with the lunch shift. No one will be there for hours. So we got our food relatively quickly. It was good. It was, you know, just like a standard Mexican restaurant. But uh, my mom uh, suggested we get margaritas. And uh, then she was off and running for the rest of the night. When we all got home, my mom turned to me and said, Tim, go to the grocery store and pick up uh, these uh, Jack Daniels hard fruit punch things. They're really good. She usually drinks wine, but I guess she's graduated to the hard stuff. Picked up a couple of those, 12 bottles, and my mom was set for the night. Until around one in the morning when she started violently vomiting. Old woman can't handle her liquor. It's very unhenson like We come from a long, proud line of alcoholics. Well, the real reason her tummy was upset was, was because she wouldn't stop feeding us food the entire night. You know, she's Italian, even though she doesn't look it. So the second we get home, she pulls out this seven-layer tort. 
It's like a cake with all sorts of different fl- and then ice cream and a cheese spread, cheese crackers, meats, you know, pepperoni, donuts, pistachios, sesame sticks, pizza. Then she starts she warms a pizza. She's like, I got this, I got this um Pizza Hut pizza yesterday. And I mean, you know how it is when you're sitting around a table and there's a bunch of food, even though you're not hungry, you're you, you, you're talking. You just start instinctively reaching over and uh, eating stuff, picking. You just pick at the food. Plus, we were drinking that hard cider and the Jack Daniels thing. And it's just like we, we just felt awful at the end of the night, especially my mom. I was uncomfortably full. And I guess I should uh, just explain, you know, my mom lives in one of these like uh, apartments even though it's a two bedroom apartment, uh, there's only a there's only a bed in one. You know, it's her bedroom, and then she uses the uh, the other uh, bedroom as like an office with her computer and stuff. I sleep on the couch when I'm there because you know it pulls out and turns into a bed. But the the living room is right next to the bathroom. I first realized we were in trouble when uh, you know I went to lay down to sleep. This was probably around 12 30, 1 o'clock at night, and my mom is getting ready for bed. And I just hear in the bathroom, which again, is just the next door over. (laughs) Like just spray. You can just hear the shit spraying everywhere. I'm like, oh God, this is what she gets for force feeding us all night. And then uh, shortly after the vomiting. Oh God. (laughs) And you know, it, it. It, I felt bad for her that she was not feeling well, but um, apparently she, I don't know if she missed the toilet completely when she was vomiting or if she was sitting on the toilet when vomiting. The point is there was some cleanup involved. And the thing about puking so close to where uh, I was sleeping is uh, I could, I started to smell it. It was like this sweet puke, like puke mixed with fruit punch. It was it was vile and the thing is my mom wasn't wasted it wasn't like she was completely drunk off her ass it was just that combination of alcohol and so much food something did not sit well with her but uh, she's doing much better after she vomited she felt better as uh, you often do the uh, the real interesting revelation i found uh came at uh, dinner when we were talking about family members who got pregnant and we got on the subject of my mom who uh, had me uh, notoriously late in life i'm 12 years younger than my sister i was having dinner with my brother Uh, my brother's even older than my sister so i'm 15 years younger than my brother my mom was 20 22 years old when she got knocked up right And, and when she had actually had my brother she was 23 when she had me she was 38 It's quite a long span of time. But honestly, nowadays, I don't even think it's that unusual, right? I was looking it up and, uh, you know, women have babies mid-30s all the time. It's only an issue when you're, like, in your 40s that you have to sort of be careful because you might birth a fucking grapefruit or something. I don't know if things were a lot different in the 1980s or what, but nowadays it's normal. As a matter of fact, my sister who makes fun of me all the time for being the product of an elderly pregnancy, she finally did the math and she realized that when she gave birth to her last kid, she was older than my mom was when my mom had me. So, haha, jokes on you, bitch. The revelation though is that uh when I when my mom was pregnant, my favorite aunt Uh, And she's not really my favorite. I just call her that to piss off my other aunt. I would also call her my favorite aunt because she was incredibly funny. She always made me laugh. I always just told everyone how much I love her and how funny she was, right? She told my mom to get a fucking abortion and she wasn't making a joke there. Had I known that, I don't think I would call her my favorite aunt anymore. That's for sure. She's like, oh, you don't want to deal with that. Uh, You've already had two. Aren't you tired? Just, Just flush it out kill that thing get rid of it you're too old it's probably gonna come out deformed anyway i mean she wasn't completely wrong i laughed when i heard this but my mom was like oh should i not have said that i don't know if i should have told you what kid doesn't want to hear that he was almost (laughs) aborted before pregnancy honestly i didn't care you guys know me i thought it was kind of funny plus uh, you know i won she's dead i'm not may she rot in hell 
The other thing I learned, I didn't know this. I honestly thought I managed to avoid receiving any corporal punishment from my father. I thought he kind of got it out of his system by the time I was born. You know, when my uh, brother and sister were growing up and they were really bad, he would uh, give them the belt. A few cracks on the rear end with the belt. And while I never uh, got hit with the belt, he, he would threaten me. <laughs> that was effective enough, actually. He would just sort of reach down to his uh, belt buckle and give me that look like you better stop whatever the fuck you're doing. I mean, this wasn't like a common occurrence. It's not like my my daddy would get drunk and come home and beat me with a belt. This was like, you know, in extreme cases where I was just being awful or my brother and sister were being awful. Now, by the time I came around in the 80s, beltings and spankings were on their way out. That being said, my sister reminded me this past weekend of a time when I was uh, younger and I guess I was really pissing my dad off. I don't know what I was doing, but he beat the fuck out of me with a fly swatter. Yeah, apparently cracked me on my bare ass with a fly swatter a few hundred times. Now, I don't remember this at all. Maybe I blocked it out. Maybe this is something for my therapist to help me with. But my sister said she vividly remembers it happening to me. And uh, she was like freaking out. Like she was screaming like, oh, my God, stop, dad. She she really thought that he was hurting me, which he could have. I don't know. Maybe that's why I blocked it out. Maybe it was some sort of alcoholic rage. I mean, Think about my childhood. Even before I'm bored, people want me aborted. Then, as a kid, I'm being beat with a fly swatter. Senseless. My sister's screaming. You're killing him. You're killing him. <laughs> we're, we're white trash. All the neighbors heard that. All the neighbors in the trailer park. I asked my sister, what, like, why a fly swatter? Like, what, first of all, why didn't he use the belt? That was his weapon of choice, right? She 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 had a theory that it was just the, the thing that he had in his hand. It was just like the closest thing to hit me with. Thank God he wasn't like carving a turkey at the time. Lord knows what he could have possibly used. And I'm sure the flight swatter hurt at the time, but a flight swatter can't really do that much damage, right? I still don't think it was a child abuse situation. I mean, I was a very annoying kid. I probably deserved whatever I was getting. Anyway, that is how I spent my weekend. Very eventful. I actually had a good time good seeing my I think this was the first time in 2022 that I saw my mom I'll be going back up for uh, Christmas in what 69 days 68 days something like that all right uh let's get into some audio now the reason why we are all here one of the greatest Linda Finkel Hall of Fame nominees of all time has to be Lisa Gale and her song Three Second Rule. In order to be a man, you gotta toe the line. And as long as you're able, we'll do just fine. Now, my baby. I figured out what song Lisa Gale should cover next. I think she would do a really good job singing Taste the Biscuit. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. I think she could do it justice. Taste the honey sauce. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with the honey sauce. This song is totally in Lisa Gale's wheelhouse. Here's just a little more of a three second rule. You can only look for three seconds, then look away. Dr. Hugby's in the Discord provided a link to a man doing a cover of Lisa Gale's Three Second Rule. This is Hot Dad. Holy shit, I'm loving this. Now my baby should only shit 
That is actually, <laughs> he somehow turned Three Second Rule into a good song. That is some witchcraft right there. I'm so curious how he handles the best slash worst part of the Lisa Gale song. Here it comes that note. Oh, Jesus it's fucking hot. Christ. All right. Here is uh, Hot Dad's version of that portion of the song. but my panties are wet. Again, I will provide a link on the show notes today to Hot Dad's version of Three Second Rule. You know, he, of course, is not the only man to try his hand at a Three Second Rule cover. Yours truly was the first. When you eat those spicy wraps, you need to take a burning crap. Just stick to blowing mud. And keep from pulling your pod. I can hear you stroke. That's when my five minute rule comes into play. You can only take a dump for five minutes, then flush away. It's called my five minute rule. So you aren't in there playing with your jewel. It's just my five minute rule. If you're a bad boy and you don't follow my rules I lock you in a room when I leave so you cannot cheat Uh And if you try to leave, I'll just cut off your manly meat Your dick should get hard just for me My screeching voice should cause your arousal Estrogen cream. My pussy dryness is pretty extreme. It's just my three second rule. It's designed to keep my man in line as long as he knows the three second rule. Like the kind of rule you learn in school. Where are my bipolar pills? I just had my prescription refilled. I mean, I don't want to say my version is better than Hot Dad's, but it's uh, it's got more emotion. It's more raw. I think it's a tie. We both did really good. Pat on the back to uh, Hot Dad. All right, let's move on. I've got another great video from that YouTube channel, Columbus Police Body Camera. This one's a little bit different, though. It's kind of funny. You got uh, we got this uh, black uh, African American girl out here again, right here in front of the city. And right here in front of my business, over here at Sullivan Avenue, prostituting again. Female black with a ponytail, just standing here looking stupid. (laughs) That was the call that police received. When the police actually got on the scene, he realized these are just two people waiting for the bus. Not a prostitute. How you guys doing? You guys waiting on the bus? Okay. That's what it looks like to me. Um, You guys live out here, right? Someone called. They they said that you were a prostitute and that you were her her guy. <laughs> you know why? That's my uncle. Yeah. 
Now, you know, if I was a prostitute, I would probably try to pull that too. Oh, this isn't my pimp. This is my uncle. But I think she's serious here. Like, I think she's for real. And I drove by. I was like, that is not a prostitute. <laughs> Police doesn't think that she's a prostitute either. And I just wanted to, the person I called didn't leave their name or information. They refused. But I'm like, come on. Like, we know what hookers look like. Okay. You're not a hooker. We not know he's gay. She doesn't look like a hooker, and she points out that uh, her pimp here, also her uncle, is gay. <laughs> <laughs> They're hugging. I just thought it was funny. I wasn't even going to get out of the car, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go tell them because I wanted her to see your reaction. Oh, that was funny. You know what I mean? People call about stupid record, stuff out here, and I'm sorry. You can't really hear too well, but the uncle talks, and he is obviously gay. So, you know, her story checks out, in my opinion. Is she is she making you good money today? <laughs> <laughs> That's a risky joke from the cop. Pays off, though. They're laughing. They think it's funny. I Dude, wish I was. You know what's the thing? I ought to be out here. I, I can make some good You money. walk down the street, and you're going to cause a traffic problem. I probably will. If you do ever start hooking, you can make some good money. That's pretty much what the cop is saying here. You're going to cause a traffic problem. I probably will. I was just... Because of this right here, it, it didn't look like you know she had anything on. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the the gay uncle is saying that because she's got a she's got like a tight brown shirt on and it matches her skin tone. It does kind of look like she's naked underneath her jacket. <laughs> well, because it is kind of skin tone, right? Yeah. You are kind of brown. You got kind of a brown shirt on. Coco. Coco. <laughs> that's good. right, gay uncle. No, I was like, I was like, she is too clean. You can tell. You, you can tell just by driving by that somebody has had a shower. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you, police officer. One of the happier, less tragic Columbus body cam videos we've featured in a while. Uh, I made the mistake of checking out the Not Safe for Work channel in our Discord. And someone, you know, if you people don't like me playing scat on the podcast, stop submitting scat audio into the Discord. Pajamas found a guy who was just sitting on the toilet naked, experimenting. Morning. My hair is a fucking mess. I have this shit so fucking bad. Yeah, the messy hair is going to be the least of your problems here. I have this shit so fucking bad. Ready for that morning dump? Oh, fuck. Oh. He apparently shits, even though he's sitting on the toilet, he shits in his hand. It's going to end up in my hair anyway. That's okay. Your hair's messy. Oh, he's oh. eating it. Oh. And he sounds like he's in ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he sounds like my mom <laughs> this past weekend. I love even people who really enjoy shit can't help but puking when it hits their mouth. That really should tell you something. Something you should not be chewing on. If you thought that video was disgusting, there's another one where this guy concocts some sort of piss and shit smoothie. Like, he just sort of mixes it all together. All right. Cheers, I guess. He calls it a shit piss slurry. <laughs> Never mind, that's not how the... <laughs> really, we've crossed the line with the scat freak here. <laughs> Never mind, that's not how the... <laughs> That was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. Oh, he's still pee. I don't understand the problem here. I thought the piss might make the shit more palatable. Boy, was I wrong. Wow. He surprised himself with that one. Who posted it? Was that pajamas again? Pajamas, who is this guy that you keep posting? There's no information. Like, where? I need his account. He's a gold mine. So we went from shit to piss and shit. Now to just piss. This will be the last video. This is just a guy waking up his girlfriend. She's sleeping in bed and uh, he's going to piss right on her face. Now, obviously, this is a couple into pee play, which is fine. But I find it interesting that there are no plastic sheets, no tarps. This is just like a regular bedroom, regular bed, Egyptian cotton sheets. It just seems like it's going to be very, very messy. Pajamas says everything in that house probably smells like piss. Oh, here he goes. She's waking up. Hmm. My alarm clock. <coughs> no. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> Starts pissing right in her mouth. Hmm. 
She pulls the cover back so he can, uh, you know, piss on her tits. So she's into this. She likes it. Different strokes for different folks. I ran across this Twitter. Where, where's this uh, update I saw from this guy? This gay guy who wrote, he has to be kidding, right? <laughs> the tweet was, my boyfriend ejaculated a kidney stone into my hole. I'm keeping it there. It's my little pussy pearl. That was a new one for me. Ejaculating kidney stones into some dude's butt. That's my new white whale, by the way. I want to see a video of that. Took me 15 years to find a, a penis queefing. Hopefully it won't take that long for me to find kidney stone fetish videos. All right. Uh, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist of the fucked up news right now. <laughs> If you enjoy Distorted View Daily, can I ask you for something? A little help? I'll make it worth your while. That's right. I do butt stuff. No, uh, sign up for the Sideshow DV's member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week I do brand new exclusive shows just for Sideshow members. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. And then again on Thursday. So be on the lookout for that if you are Sideshow members. And if you're not yet a member, sign up. Memberships are very inexpensive. Only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. You get a little uh, podcast RSS feed that you can plug into most podcasting apps. Ones that work with uh, like username and passwords and stuff. Although, if you use Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you just care about getting new Sideshow episodes, you can now sign up for access right in those apps. Just a few taps. Bing, bang, boom, you're in. Just a few uh, easy ways to gain access to the Sideshow. And finally, last way to support DV, we've got a Patreon account. Patreon.com slash Distorted View. You can pledge as little as a dollar over there. Every little bit helps. If you pledge at least five, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first, yada, yada, yada. All right, three very quick stories now. First up. A Michigan man was sentenced to life in prison last week over a litany of crimes related to the kidnapping, ting, abuse, ting, ting, and sexual assault, ting, 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 of a 14-year-old girl from Texas. Hi. Hello. Uh, he met her in a chat server online and eventually transported her across state lines. Thomas John Bocamp, 22, was convicted on all 16 counts against him in June of this year. Federal jurors took just an hour to convict the defendant, according to a press release. Quote, this man stalked and sexually assaulted a 14-year-old, then had the gall to claim in federal court that their so-called relationship was consensual. The child, who bravely faced her abuser in court, asserted in no uncertain terms that his advances were unwelcome. By law, 14-year-olds cannot consent to sex acts with adults. On Thursday, October 20th, District Judge James Wesley Hendricks sentenced the defendant during a contentious hearing during which the state played a damning and remorseless jailhouse phone call. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what sealed his fate. Introduced into evidence in the call, the defendant said he would not apologize for quote-unquote raping a 14-year-old as well as other unrepentant statements about the nature of the charges against him. Statements like, I like teenage girls. That's giving off some real... And hey, Travis, I like beer. It's good for you. Energy. Travis, by the way, if you're wondering where he's at, he is now a Supreme Court justice. Yes, we drank beer. I liked beer. I like beer. Still like beer. I like beer. Yeah, we drank beer. It's good for you. Sometimes probably had... Too many beers, and sometimes other people had too many beers. I like beer. We drank beer. We like beer. It's good for you. I like teenage girls. They're younger. I like it like that. They're good for my dick. Uh, I like teenage girls. They don't like that I like that, Bo Camp said. I frankly don't care what the morality of this current time and place says. It's not wrong. There's nothing wrong about it. And they're not going to ever convince me of its wrongness. So up theirs. I hate this nation. You know what? I guess I am getting some strong Galileo 2333 vibes, too, there. Someone's been watching his videos. Also, in the phone call, uh, he, he talked specifically about or to uh, two federal prosecutors. He says, quote, if you're listening to this, yeah, your family's going to die. As I said, he really sealed his fate in this phone call. The person on the other end reminded him, like, um, yeah, you're, you're, this, this phone call's probably being recorded, you know, because he's in prison. And that's when he said, yeah, your family's going to die. 
play this at my fucking sentencing. Do it. I hate you. And guess what? They did. Bocamp and Hendrix took turns condemning one another during the hearing. Hendrix, of course, being the judge. The defendant said, I'm angry all the time. I'm sad. I'm lonely. I'm hate filled. Probably because he doesn't have any 14 year old pussy to fuck. I called you terrible things. I hate you. I hate the government. I hate America. Please don't isolate that audio. I do not hate America. Tim Henson loves America. Uh, the reason I hate so so much is because I love so much. He's a very passionate man. I love someone I connected with. I was filled with violent sexual fantasies, and then I thought I had found someone who understood me. I didn't want to take advantage of her. I could never picture myself here. The family, my family, was not a concern. It was all about her. I loved her. The judge then said, you used the internet to find and prey on young girls. You tormented her. You manipulated her into sending you images. You uh, tortured her into going with you. You told her you would murder her family. You raped her, strangled her, and many other things. You have one of the highest offense levels I've ever seen at 52. We only go up to 43. He's off the charts, man. You're a dangerous pedophile. You think the laws are unjust. I agree with the government blaming your situation on being diagnosed on the autism spectrum is very disrespectful to those who have autism. I see no atonement, acceptance, or remorse from you. I have to consider your risk to society, which is significant. The charges uh, on which Bo Camp were convicted are long, like cyber stalking, uh, 10 counts of uh, production and attempted production of child porn, transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal sex stuff, one count of enticement, two counts of receipt of child porn, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You know, it goes on and on. He's going to be behind bars forever. You can get a good idea of what a psychopath this guy is uh, with his mugshot. Take a look at the chapter artwork. He's like sm- he's got a smirk on his face. He don't care. He just got that teen poon. Although I think prison's going to be a tough adjustment for him. He looks like he might have a breedable ass. Prisoners are going to love him. All right. Second story we have for you today. This one comes from Westlake, Ohio. Westlake is in the Cleveland region, I believe. Westlake police are investigating after they say a Cleveland father accidentally called the business to hire someone to murder his son. Whoops. (laughs) You done fucked up. My question is, what business was he actually trying to get? There are places you could just call up and ask for that type of service. Police say they received a call at 1045 p.m. on October 13th from a business on Canterbury Road to report suspicious voicemails. An employee was alarmed because the message indicated that a man wanted to put a $5,000 hit on another person. I think that is so incredibly sad that a person's life is only worth $5,000. That's an incredibly low amount to to pay to kill someone, right? Police said that detectives discovered the man misdialed an individual's phone number and accidentally left the message for the business. And it's crazy because you know the the name of the business is announced at, at the beginning of the voicemail message. Thanks for calling Ace Hardware on Ridge Avenue. You've called after business hours. Leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. You know, something like that. It reminds me, it's the same thing with the 206-666-4463 voicemail number of ours. Occasionally, you idiots will give out that phone number for various things. I think at one time, one of you guys posted that it was um, the phone number to Nambla or a pedophile. I I don't remember exactly what, but we would get all these voicemails from uh, angry women, mothers, and they hear the, the voicemail message like, hey, thanks for calling the Distorted View Oh God voicemail line. Your call could be played on the show. I mean, that should give you enough clues like, oh, this is some sort of uh, radio show or something. Maybe it's not a pedophile's home phone number. I know I would then like wonder, oh, what is this Distorted View? Like I would do a search then. Oh, it's a comedy podcast. Like, oh, oh someone's fucking around. I would take two seconds to do the research, but no, most people don't. They're dumb. I found someone posted the phone number of a pedophile. I'm going to call. I'm going to let this pervert know what I think of him. You know what? I'm not a cop, but if I was, you'd all be in jail. And the only reason that I'm not there 
beating the shit out of every last one of you and killing you is because you know why? I'm a Christian and I'm not going to jail for scumballs like you. She really thought she did something there. I want to kill you. Oh, God. I want to beat the living fuck out of you. But I am a Christian woman. My faith won't allow me to do such a thing. Okay, lady. All right. Uh, anyway, back to the story here. Police said the detectives discovered the man misdialed an individual's phone number and accidentally left the messages. The 58-year-old man from Cleveland admitted to making the calls and was arrested, according to police, who say the man blamed poor judgment from a previous argument with his son and alcohol for making the calls. I liked beer. I like beer. Still like beer. I like beer. Yeah, we drank beer. It's good for you. It can also be dangerous, as we're learning. The man has been charged with felony complicity to commit murder and is being held on a $500,000 cash bond. He's currently at the Cuyahoga County Jail. His son was called and declined to seek any protection due to the threats. That's just dad. He's a lot of talk. Dude, he was getting ready to pay $5,000 to kill you. The only reason you're alive is because he was drunk and dialed the wrong number. Kind of makes my dad hitting me with a fly swatter seem not so bad, huh? Father of the year material compared to this monster. All right, uh, final story we have for you. There's been lots of speculation about what porn is doing to the psyche of man. Is it uh, fucking us up mentally? Is it uh, preventing us, uh, making it harder for us to get boners and ejaculate great quantities of viscous baby fluids? Possibly. But now, a study published in the International Journal of Impotence Research... Which reminds me, I need to renew my subscription. That new study suggests that porn use does not predict problems in erectile functioning or sexual satisfaction. Hell yeah, baby! Resume baiting. It's safe, effective, and fun. We read a, uh, a research, or about a research, not too long ago, uh, stating that guys should be masturbating or coming or having sex somehow expelling those gloopy jelly babies like 20 how many times a, a month like 20 to 25 times a month to help ensure that you don't get uh like prostate cancer or something was it prostate cancer or maybe testicular cancer oh one of those cancers it doesn't matter the point is it's okay to masturbate and it's okay to watch porn while you're masturbating uh that's according to science pornography use is a hotly contested issue in many relationships since the rise of the internet, porn is easily accessible. Oh, yes, the golden age of pornography. Affordable, commonly used, and able to be consumed without anyone else knowing. Not the way I masturbate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a big fat jack. It's all so good. Like, I'm very verbal. I'm not verbal when I have sex, but when I masturbate, I'm very talky. Uh, pornography usage has been linked to negative outcomes, such as impersonal sexual attitudes. Well, for most gays, sex is pretty impersonal. Most of the time, you don't even see their face. You just see their shoes at the bottom of the stall. Glory holes, man. That's the way to go. Delayed ejaculation, which, you know, if you're a premature ejaculator to begin with, delayed ejaculation is a good thing. It evens you out. It's also been shown to have positive effects, see? Such as providing sexual education and aiding in sexual dysfunction. Previous research showing porn causes erectile dysfunction... I have had many uh, method method oh boy methodolog method method methodological <laughs> hold on I'll get there methodological methodological how do you fucking say that can I get thirty seconds on the clock please method 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 methodological methodological method methodological hold on a second methodological okay that's a hard one even this lady can even the computer has trouble saying it methodological yeah it doesn't sound like like when you read that word it doesn't it doesn't seem like it should be like that it should be like metho metho methodolo you know like what methodo methodological methodological you know like uh sometimes when the base word changes so like there's it's method but then methodical you know it, it, it you say method but in a different way that's how I thought, like, this should be said. Meth methodolog methodological. Anyway. All right. So we got to the bottom of that. Now, the research stating that porn might have, uh, you know, links to erectile dysfunction. 
may have had methodological flaws. And uh, this study seeks to explore that question once again. In the study, David L. Rowland and colleagues examined a sample of 3,586 men recruited online from English-speaking countries and Hungary. <laughs> I don't know, Hungary for good measure, I guess. Respondents who were not having sex with their partner or who had never had a partner were immediately eliminated. Sorry, we're not looking for losers for this study. Participants completed a survey consisting of demographic questions, anxiety, depression, medical conditions, yada, 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 sexual orientation, number of current sexual partners. Results showed that factors that increased likelihood of erectile dysfunction were advanced age, anxiety, depression, medical issues, less frequent sex, lower importance of sex, and decreased sexual and relationship satisfaction. Problems with erectile functioning was a predictor of decreased satisfaction in this sample. Men with erectile dysfunction did not significantly differ in their porn usage than men without erectile dysfunction. Despite this, there was a small effect of frequent masturbation being related to problems with erectile functioning. Porn consumption was not linked to decreased relationship or sexual satisfaction when masturbation frequency was controlled for. Quote, findings of the study reiterate the relevance of long-known risk factors such as age, anxiety, yada, 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 but they do not support the notion that porn use is widely associated with poorer erectile functioning or increased ED severity. So, man, if you've been worried about this, fear not. Place your dick firmly in hand and load up Pornhub. Let's watch some vids together. Oh, not that porn. Not, no, not scat porn. That's going to have an effect on you and your penis. Normal porn. Just watch normal porn. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Love to hear from you freaks. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash distortedview show. Yada, yada, yada. You know all the ways to contact me. Let's check in with a few patrons and wrap things up. Yes, caller. I know that that type of sound, like that echo, someone's calling from a public restroom. Oh, or just a or just a bathroom. I bet you he's puking, right? Did you go out drinking with my mom? What she sounded like. <laughs> Occasionally, people do call in and record their bowel movements. They they dangle a, a little microphone into the toilet and poop. In this case, this guy has an upset tummy. <laughs> Give me a Brit Brat. Brit Brit! I didn't think he was done. Yeah, that's it. Good job, my friend. Get it all out. Get the evil out. Timid Boo Hanson. This is Twink Toilet. Um. So, funny thing, at work, I was listening to an old episode, don't remember which, but someone brought up Latinx, Latin X, whatever the, like, new PC shit Oh, yeah. Is. By the way, uh, Lord Douche is Cuban, and he hates that term Latin X. He thinks it's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. And you were so upset about that and claimed it was, you know, white libtards. Uh, yes. You know, and you're like, I can say that because I share a bed with a spit. <laughs> and it made me laugh because <laughs> me and my that? boyfriend tend to call each other slurs all the time. Yeah. Um, he is Vietnamese uh, and likes to throw out uh, some harsher ones for me being half black. Um, mm, you know, you're all sorts of exotic. I pretty much have what to a rely couple. on Gook. You know, he, oh. he's throwing out. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually I, I get on him because he's throwing out you know the, the nigger with the hard R. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, you know, you're running into the dirt. You need to come up with something a little more creative. Yeah. Uh, so now he started calling me Moon Cricket. 
Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is a, a slur I didn't even know, uh, which is in reference to slaves singing songs at the yeah. moonlight. Yeah, they, we talked about that here on the show. Um, I'm, I'm guessing years ago at this point, but yeah. They were called moon crickets. Yep. Uh, so mm-hmm. anyways, no, you and Lord Juice uh, just reminded me of me and my boyfriend yeah. and our uh, not are not race play because it's never sexual it's done out of comedy and anger yes so, same yeah. here we never do that like that that's not a, a sex thing <laughs> hello Tim uh, you know uh, I slept with over 30 white women all right thanks for thanks for the tally occasion uh, I'll update the board a lot of them were overweight <laughs> so okay. I think I think the white ladies are the most Bloodiest. I just yeah. got a feeling uh, I have not been, uh, I have not traveled the world, though. I have not been privileged to have the money to travel the world and uh, to sleep with a uh, woman from Australia. I mean, I beat my meat to women from Australia that I have uh, videos on uh, the Pornhub, but that's it. Um, also, is I, that what you? That's what you really aspire for. Like that's the one type of woman you want. You really want to have sex with an Australian. Was wondering about. I don't think I've ever heard someone say that before. Peter North. Peter North. Uh, uh, some of you freaks that were born after 1988. Yeah. You know, don't know, but. Yeah, we were talking about Peter North on uh, what Friday show. Well, when you apply for a job, you have to write, uh, fill out an application. So when. Mr. Peter North was trying to get hired as a uh, porn actor. Uh, he che- he had must have checked off uh, uh, homosexual sex. So you think when someone aspires to be a porn actor, they fill out an application, a la like McDonald's or, so or something? You had the choice between I don't straight think so. homosexual because if he trans or transitioned over the straight sex. Well, you know, he was originally a fan of the gayism. I don't think so. It's, like it's, it's kind of common that uh, straight guys, some straight guys, I mean, not a, a, every gay guy could do this, stomach it, but uh, some gay guys, well, you know, it's called gay for pay, right? You know, you, you, it's hard to, to break into the porn business. It's a little easier to do it, I guess, if you're gay. Swift. She first came out, she was a country star. And oh, Taylor Swift, yes. She over the pop. More. It's it's the exact same thing. You're right. It's just like Peter North going from gay porn to straight porn. <laughs> Thank you for that, for breaking it down, putting it into terms we can all understand. That is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Want you guys to email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206 Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. I like beer. I like beer. Still like beer. I like beer. Yeah, we drank beer. It's good for you. Spread the distortion. STD, tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to rate us and review us wherever you can criticize podcasts. Remember, tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. Uh, it's going to be posted late again. All these shows this week are going to be posted late. Uh, it's just, you know, we're, we're behind a little. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you back on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Have you or a loved one ordered panties from MyCrustyPanties.com? If you've licked, chewed, or sucked clean a My Krusty Panty, call the Levinch Group today. Jennifer's discharge is loaded with hepatitis C, chlamydia, syphilis, meningitis, womanagitis, cochlear fungus benetine, HIV-1, HIV-2, the AIDSening, HIV-3, the directed DVD illness that's way worse than HIV-1 or 2. If you've experienced any adverse symptoms since chewing on panties with dried up snatch sludge on them, call the Levin's Group now. You may be entitled to substantial compensation for your very gross fetish and even worse decision-making skills. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.